Good morning from New York on a Sunday. Today's topic, Social Evolution Quakers, United, Unitarian Universalists, and Health, IMC. Okay. Let's uh, go for the, the thank yous. Thank you to Big Linux. <coughs> to uh, Linux in general for helping me to be able to do this. And uh, switch to Linux and uh, DistroTube for the great videos that uh, also helped me along my way. And uh, especially toward uh, an appreciation of their philosophy, which, by the way, connects uh, to everything in IMC. <laughs> and uh, thanks uh, to all of the people who labor hard and uh, are not paid enough. Social evolution, you know, comes about when there's a need for change and uh, when people experience that need. And uh, a lot of it uh, goes back to trade and human nature. Trade uh, can bring a lot of people together and help them to grow tolerance but uh, uh, for their differences, but uh, those uh, tolerances take time because of human nature. And uh, a lot of difficulties in the world today are because we just haven't arrived at a, a greater degree of tolerance. And, if we have the uh, forms of empathy, uh, IMC uh, is uh, at least partially based on, um, that tolerance would grow. Empathy itself helps with tolerance. Creative, objective, and compassionate uh, in forms of empathy are particularly uh, helpful. And uh, I've talked before about how this pattern, uh, all of these things relate to survival of the species and and, and uh, individual survival as well. And um, that is involved with trade. So trade needs to be um, connected to all of these, all of these uh, perspectives. That's and uh, the social evolution toward uh, a better world. Um, all evolution is going to be pleasant for us. But um, for a better world for humans and uh, even for life in general at some point. Um, to the extent that it relies on us behaving ourselves there. Um, and uh, if you see intelligence as uh, something that uh, life evolves toward and has some kind of purposeful thing, it may not be, but <laughs> it's certainly nice to think of it that way. Um, so, the social ev evolution. Uh, it depends a lot on uh, how well we trade and um, how fair that trade is. So positive social evolution um, is a movement toward greater fairness in trade. You say, well, how does this relate to 
extended family organizations in or in particular uh, Quakers and uh, Unitarian Universalists. Well, they evolved to embrace a larger number of people. And uh, that is uh, what trade does. It brings people together and forces this kind of uh, change. And without tolerance, without trust, then uh, trade uh, breaks down. And uh, the more uh, humanity realizes <laughs> uh, that they uh, to uh, approach these issues of empathy and so on and increase their tolerance of one another and, uh, and uh, work toward more efficient and fair trade. And Quakerism, you know, this in, in uh, Unitarian Universalism, there was a, a picture of the old forms of religion not really being particularly fair or, or not particularly objective in the case of some Unitarian Universalists and uh, uh, not toward uh, natural morality which comes from the empathies uh, the compassion uh, giving us uh, goodness and uh, uh, creativity giving us art uh, and uh, objectivity giving us truth an objective look at some of the older religions of the time caused them to move in a, a new in new directions. I predict that uh, somewhere along the line they will they will meet up. They uh, were both working very hard in slavery, for instance. Okay, how is that related to trade? Well, that's not fair trade. <laughs> When you have someone enslaved, you know, and they don't have any choice. But choice can be an illusion. Trade can tend to uh, give, of course, of human nature can begin to give too much to too few. Corporations have been a major force in uh, permitting that. In India, they have referred to the one world corporate government. Smart people. The, you know, India is where you get the con first concept, the recorded concept of uh, zero. Yeah, it was India. Uh, look it up. And um, so I've Kind of talked about all these you know, all these relate, but it, the overall health of humanity um, is involved with this movement toward greater acceptance and tolerance and uh, and trust, which helps trade and helps us to develop fairer trade, which comes about as a combination of all these forms of empathy. Um, and these empathies communicating with uh, our trading institutions uh, and uh, individuals. Remember again, catalysts for trade and for change can begin from an individual or from the society. The society may uh, spark uh, change or the individual. Each are a catalyst for the other. So changes in society for the good help individuals and then they, you might have some great leaders rise up in uh, support of IMC philosophy. Um, in this, you know, and they in turn influence other uh, and society at large, two-way street. So 
evolution is true, a two-way street social evolution is uh, between uh, broader groups and individuals. And examples of that, Martin Luther King Jr. learned from uh, Mahatma Gandhi and uh, the great leader from South Africa, Mandela. So these emerged from great unfairness and the need to address it. And uh, they were voices for that change in a peaceful way, which is definitely calling on the, the powers of empathy that uh, individuals have and have. <coughs> <coughs> Things, as I, I say, that, that uh, develop later in a human being, you know, because of social interaction. And uh, I'd be very surprised to see uh, a level of uh, you know, type of intelligence such as humans have without uh, uh, it coming from a very social uh, base. Um, that, that, for instance, well, that just, you can argue logically, you know, it's like the ability to pass on from one generation to another things that have been learned. And that helps a great deal with uh, positive evolution. And, uh, so. Where do we go now with this thought? It's, the um, I think I've done a pretty good uh, overview. Um, what should these uh, organizations do now? Uh, what kinds of leadership are we looking at? Um, in the future well i think there will be a greater amount of uh, democracy but uh and democracy can only hold up with when the forces of empathy are there and uh, when society's institutions recognize the importance of their jobs um, and supporting these forms of empathy as I've said before, uh, extended family organizations like churches and temples and mosques and so on. There's extended family organizations, their job is to be an extended family and to, uh, and on the truly spiritual side, to advance these forms of empathy, which I'm talking about. Um, there's a deeper level of change, which uh, involves changing our own self-concepts. And this can be uncomfortable. There will be those who are always clinging to the past because of, hey, it worked. Then you have the others who know that we change. And uh, oftentimes they begin as uh, small voices. They grow. And uh, this takes courage. Uh, courage is a very important quality to have. And I think that the forms of empathy help, help with that courage because it helps us to realize ourselves in a way that is a part of the whole process of everything. And not just a subject uh, peering out at uh, objects, uh, but a part of everything. <clears throat> and that's mysticism. There's a, a bit of mysticism uh, joining of a sense of 
what's greater than ourselves and ourselves um, at the heart of um, you know most religion and uh, and mystics uh, usually leading the charge so we have a lot of examples of that and uh, I think that the Buddhist uh, religion uh, focuses more on the objective empathy and uh, Christianity more on the compassionate and, and uh, Hinduism uh, especially the Vaishnava uh, Buddhists uh, <clears throat> they uh, they're focused on creativity God at play and uh the uh islamic religion these are four major religions today um islamic religion is all about trust inshallah the sense that uh, we're actually just part of uh, something larger and uh it's the will of that larger that we follow it. Remember, I said that the <clears throat> notion of God and so on comes from this uh, sense that we have of our own brain and the uh, sense that it's making the real decisions in our life. And there's proof of that. We are aware of having made a decision after our brain has already decided it. The supreme controller. So trust is very important. You know, trust is uh, the virtue of uh, the sharing of the trade that's at the core of uh, social change and, uh, and, uh, and health. As we advance along the way, the society also becomes healthier. And there's great evidence that people who practice things <clears throat> like that IMC promotes uh, and uh, possibly have longer, healthier lives. What gets in the way of your longer, healthier life is damage, faith, and love. That can extend into politics in terms of what's like the, these conspiracy theories we're hearing, which is all about fear and anger. And um, when those things fire up, thinking goes down. So that needs to be addressed and um, hmm. so it also has to do with uh, what I'm describing here has to do with uh, uh, the lack of faith in other people and lack of empathy the idea that a group of people are not composed of people and that uh, if you form a large group that uh, it's just not going to be helpful and uh, well, that's not true you know it's some people you know it's true that all the power and all of the wealth whatever shouldn't be centralized uh, too much but um, to see people who are wealthy as evil you know, that's that's bizarre you, know, you want to, don't want to see people as, as uh, evil because of, uh, at all if they're doing bad things, you know, in case of a criminal or whatever, it's damaged faith and love. And um, that's brain damage, too. 
So, um, yeah, the health has a lot to do with who we are and what we do. And there was one example of an individual who, who, uh, was very violent and, and a harmful individual and uh, they found out it was a tumor on the brain. The more we understand the, the real problems, the more we're going to agree with uh, one thing that Jesus was supposed to have said. Uh, when he referred to the so-called sinners as uh, sick, what kind of uh, healing is required for this sickness? Uh, that's a spiritual sickness. Uh, it means that we need to develop our empathy so, and, uh, and practice empathy within ourselves and without side of everyone. And uh, that's healthier. And it could mean a longer life. Why? Because when damaged faith and love occurs, uh, a lot of it having to do with great unfairness and trade um, and war that can stem from that so easily. Um, when you're looking at that, damaged faith and love, you're looking at a need for improved spiritual health and growth. It's not healthy not to grow. Stop growing and start, uh, start dying. And uh, so again, what does the trauma, which is damage, faith, and love, what does it do to people? Well, trauma blocks us from overwhelming trauma then, then we the anxiety that it provokes within us is uh, so great that the brain shuts it down how does it do it well it generalizes the whole impact um ray you know you were terrified by a cat as a child and uh, now you were afraid of all cats but uh, you can uh, it gives you an option uh, to avoid and that is to avoid cats you know? so it's um, the symbolic workings uh, mean that our original needs um, you know that to avoid that particular cat for instance um, the, these things are blocked and, um, our connection to our needs are blocked and remember, the empathies are ways that we connect to those needs also, forms of uh, reflection that uh, utilize the, what are the roots of those forms of empathy before we had a self-concept, play, expression, focus, and connection with our needs. So, There's beginnings of uh, the uh, empathetic intelligence uh, early because we're social animals. The other things evolve. All right. So, how does that relate to health? Well, if you're blocking. <coughs> what the reality was with the trauma, the, the real need, which now is so covered over by anxiety, or was at the time, that uh, it was changed into symbolic form. Well, you're running from the wrong things and maybe toward the wrong things. And you're more prone to uh, forms of uh, addiction because you symbols don't fill you up. They don't, there's no satiation point. 
which is why uh, uh, Jesus said um, money is the root of all evil, like mammon. Um, symbolic need causes a lot of harm. It's, it's unhealthy. It's the kind of unhealthy that uh, produces uh, lacks or in performance and, and, and integration of the empathetic perspectives and the internal uh, perspectives. Uh, not knowing what you need uh, it adds a kind of confusion which uh, is felt within the body itself. Um, your, your body needs to determine what's friend and what's foe. And all of this symbolization can blur, um, pull a switcheroo regarding what's friend and what's foe. So you'll have uh, inefficient immune systems uh, as a result of this disease. And uh, beneath that disease, of course, is uh, the origins, which is uh, damage, faith, and love. But uh, I use that as a term for the for the lighter stuff, you know, the lighter stuff and things that usually happen uh, after we're fully grown. You know, when the brain is mature, which is after 25. Um, and uh, deeper, more tragic is the ACEs, you know, the first childhood experiences of the trauma that yet uh, language uh, experience as a child. Um, because then you don't have wordless terror. Wordless terror is going to be much more biochemically uh, impacting and uh, that's the trauma that, that occurs before before you have language. So these things and you know that's why I, I call it toxic because uh, it's more biochemical we call it toxic uh, uh, trauma. Uh, and uh, the ACEs are that's that's something that's uh, more uh, according to uh, some psychologists a second line, more emotional brain, and um, referring to that. Um, would be, uh, you know, just regular trauma, you know, but it's also developmental, whatever developmental in its nature, of course, uh, and it's emotional, and uh, it's slight, it's connected with language, so it's. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, uh, childhood trauma, CPTSD. Uh, that's how you might uh, label that. Um, all right, this this is how all this relates to health. And uh, look it up. When you look things up. Don't look at things that. Uh, only confirm what you believe before. Look at look at a number of things. That's why at the end of uh, uh, my videos, I have a dis I have a description which uh, is followed by lots of different videos and uh, perspectives on life and the universe and whatever that I found interesting. Not necessarily agreeing with, but uh, and uh, for you to explore on your own. Okay. So I I think uh, with the let's go back to Quakers and Unitarians and, and Unitarian Universalists actually a merger of 
two groups, which was part of their evolution. Uh, Quakerism, of course, uh, got rid of uh, the clergy. You know, much more egalitarian, much more democratic. And uh, they would just wait on people to have an inspiration and speak. And they didn't have uh, beliefs. They had questions. Um, they didn't have, like, a creed. And that was it. So... But they were missing, of course, in trying to feel one with the universe and whatever. You can be an atheist and just realize that you're part of the nature and the universe and so on. That's something bigger than yourself and something that yourself is a part of. And when you look at it all together, the whole idea of self seems to dissolve. That's very much a, a mystic kind of experience. Um, one that Buddha talked about. Okay, now when, when, uh, what should they do? I mentioned that one. No, they should become more democratic. And, uh, we should, uh, stop seeing particular individuals as the various forms of intelligence. And, uh, so on. As, uh, as uh, things to be revered in all we do in history, that person is no more mysterious than you. Hey, you know, it's all right, the honorific terms is. It's something that uh, most people uh, that, that are truly smart and, and capable don't turn to, you know. You just call them Mike or Mitch or Jacob or Henrietta. You know, it's about, these, these are the humble scientists that we have. We have it in, they, you know, they don't they usually have to, to, you know, flog their PhDs. You know, it's, yeah, they're pretty obviously uh, well informed. They're obviously well informed and can tie things together so that uh, uh, others see um, their value in leadership. Um, as Einstein famously said, if you can't um, point it to a six year old, you probably don't understand it very well yourself. Oh, I yeah. So, so now I'm going to end this uh, this uh, presentation with the word Namaste. Come to the end of uh, my allotted time. So, uh, Namaste is a great word. Um, and uh, it means, oh, that that's greater, includes ourselves. And that great uh, mystery and wonder, potential, love flow, exists in all of us. Namaste is, is a statement that uh, that in in me yeah, that in me honors that in you. Namaste. And uh, 